Hi, everyone. Uh, Scott Lachlan, I'm a co-lead of the privacy practice here at Hogan Levels. I'm excited to be joined by three of our members of our litigation team, Joe Kavanaugh, Courtney Helt, and Lance Morishigi, to discuss the recent developments on cyber litigation and data breach liability. Litigation exposure and potential liability remains top of mind, and we are tracking the developments in this area carefully. It is a rapidly developing area, and just when you think you see a some alignment among courts, the landscape shifts again. So Courtney, Joe, and Lance were authors of a recent blog discussing another important development, this time in a federal court in the Western District of Missouri. And so maybe my first question, Courtney, is to you. Your article discusses a significant case regarding the potential liabilities that may arise in connection with the data breach. Maybe you can just describe what happened. Sure. So beginning in late 2016, a law firm called Warden Greer suffered a data breach, which affected files it had retained related to one of its clients, Hiscox Insurance. After discovering the breach, Warden Greer identified which of its files relating to Hiscox may have been impacted and provided Hiscox with access to those files. However, Warden Greer declined to further analyze that data, including personally identifiable information in the Hiscox files to determine whether individuals needed to be notified of the breach, leaving that responsibility to Hiscox. So what did Hiscox seek and what was Warden Greer's defense? So in Hiscox's view, Warden Greer was responsible for analyzing the breach data and for telling Hiscox which individuals had been impacted. Hiscox maintained that the law firm had failed to meet its standard of care by not sufficiently analyzing its breach server. Hiscox sought approximately $1.3 million in compensatory damages to cover data analysis and legal bills. They also sought punitive damages. Greer, on the other hand, argued that Hiscox was confusing the traditional roles of service providers and data owners. Greer argued that it was a service provider under applicable data breach laws and industry norms, and thus it was only required to provide Hiscox with access to impacted data. Hiscox, by contrast, was a data owner, according to Greer, and Hiscox was ultimately responsible for analyzing the data, identifying individuals who had been had to be notified and for carrying out that notification. Interesting. So I think one thing that's unusual about this case is it went to a jury of conclusion, as I understand it. So what did the jury find? After only two hours, the jury sided with Greer. As a service provider, the law firm was only required to provide Hiscox access to the affected data. So Joe, maybe you can help me put this decision in context. Uh, following a breach, we are increasingly seeing lawsuits filed on a number of grounds. Uh, your article describes that this case was the first of its kind. What makes it so unique? Yeah, so as you note, Scott, you know, we frequently see lawsuits brought on a variety of bases in the wake of a data breach. The lawsuits can involve a number of common law and statutory claims. Some of the more typical ones we see are negligence, Consumer Protection Act claims, and unjust enrichment. Now, most of the time, these cases end in one of two ways. First, the defendant files a motion to dismiss, which the court grants in its entirety, or alternatively, some of the claims can proceed past the pleading stage and the parties eventually will settle the case before it goes to judgment. So this case is really a breakthrough litigation because the, there had never been a jury trial in a case like this before. And so is this it for data breach litigation? In other words, do we expect that all future trials will end in the same result? You know, overall, the posture of this case is pretty atypical, and it seems unlikely that we'll see an uptick in the number of parties trying da data breach cases. That said, the trial may suggest how a jury would view the division of responsibilities between service providers and data owners. Before this trial, it was unclear whether a jury would find that the common law duty of care following a breach aligns with the responsibilities typically found in the breach notification laws, but this jury verdict suggests that they will. So Lance, final question for you. Does this case offer any insight on how organizations can protect themselves in the future? No, I think it does. Thanks, Scott. Uh, first off, I want to reemphasize a point that, that Joe just raised, which is that you know while this case addressed the duty of care in what is a pretty special attorney-client relationship context, we think that it's really instructive for how juries will view other business-to-business -business and vendor relationships. And so given the extent to which businesses pretty much always need to share information with their vendors, 
we think that this case is helpful for nearly all businesses and attorneys advising businesses to take a look at, to think about protecting themselves down the road. So on the one hand, you know, this case was reassuring in that the jury found that the responsibilities following a breach largely align with what we would have expected. But on the other hand, this case went to trial and ended in the hands of a jury. So therefore, we think it's important for companies and their advisors to be thinking about how to allocate responsibilities and liability following a breach clearly through contractual responsibilities and indemnification clauses. Doing so can help provide greater clarity in the event of a breach and ideally potentially prevent any of these issues from going to a jury. Yeah, really important, Lance, and thank you for that. And thank you everyone for joining us for this update. The Hogan Lovells team will be monitoring this area carefully, and I'm sure we'll be back on video shortly with future developments. In the meantime, please stay with the Hogan Lovells privacy blog as we continue to monitor developments in the space. Until next time.